So why is it that Singapore 15 years ago was recruiting young scientists to come do diabetes research? Where you look at the average body weight in Singapore and by American US standards, they're very lean people. And that's reflective of all East Asians and in most and many South Asians as well. So India up through Japan and the Koreas. Um, why is it that these are people with such low body weights and even low body fat levels and yet their diabetes rates are way higher than we have in the US? And that is the difference in how people store fat. So if a human body is gaining fat mass, it will gain that fat mass through two different mechanisms. It will either be a function of multiplying the fat cells. So the person will have the ability to make new fat cells. That's called hyperplasia. And when the fat is undergoing hyperplasia, the size of the fat cell is staying very modest. So the size of the, each individual fat cell is smaller or just a lot more of them. On the other hand, you could have someone who's storing more of their fat through hypertrophy, where the number of fat cells is not changing, but the size is. The hypertrophic fat cell is a very sick fat cell for two reasons. And then I'll explain the ethnic predisposition, predisposition, predispositions because of it. So firstly, the fatter the fat cell gets, the more insulin resistant it becomes to prevent further fat growth. So to say that all another way, a fat cell can undergo more expansion than any other cell in the body that I'm aware of. It can get 20 times bigger than its original volume. And as it starts to reach this point of maximum dimension, it has to start limiting its growth. And so it becomes insulin resistant to stop growing. But at the same time, it starts to become hypoxic, where the fat cell has become so big that they've pushed each other too far from capillaries. And now it can't get the oxygen from the capillaries. And so it starts releasing a bunch of pro-inflammatory cytokines because some of them will work like a trail of breadcrumbs, resulting in one capillary having a little budding capillary grow off and follow the cytokines to the hypoxic or suffocating fat cell. So the hypertrophic fat cell becomes insulin resistant to stop growth, and it becomes pro-inflammatory to try to correct blood flow all of which results in a very insulin resistant on the course to cardiometabolic disease body. Now back to the various ethnicities, some ethnicities like whites and blacks have the ability to make new fat cells. So these are ethnicities that can be a little fatter than other ethnicities and yet have lower levels of insulin resistance and type two diabetes. And that's what we see in the U S high rates of obesity, but relatively modest rates of type two diabetes. As much as we think the problem is bad here, I think the US ranks somewhere in the 70s. Of, if you look at all the countries in the world and how diabetic they are, we're about number 70. Whereas Singapore, for example, and Japan is not too far back, Singapore is, I think, number nine. This, in, in all the countries of the Middle East are actually, numbers one through eight are like Oman, Dubai, Jordan, these countries in the Middle East. And and then the other countries sort of round out through Southeast Asia and the Middle East or the, and the Pacific Islands, the most diabetic places. These ethnicities, especially, so India has among, it is uh, uh, among the highest, most diabetic countries on the planet, East Asia, Southeast Asia, their fat cells on average are significant. The one paper I'm recalling where it looked, it took Caucasian men and South Asian men and did an adipose subcutaneous biopsy and it found that the average South Asian man had adipocytes that were about four times larger volumetrically than the fat cells in the Caucasian at the same body size, mm. same body fat percent. They just had much bigger fat cells. So to say all this another way or to start to wrap it all up, what is more problematic about fat stor storage? It's not the mass of fat that matters most, but the size of each fat cell when it comes to slow insulin resistance and the consequences of too much fat mass. And this explains why, say, an East Asian fellow will just be moderately overweight compared to his obese Caucasian counterpart, and yet he has all of the complications of insulin resistance, and this guy just doesn't look good in his Speedo and is otherwise fine metabolically. It's because his fat cells are small because he has so many of them. His fat cells are so few, but they're much larger. And so he has a lower body fat mass but it's more harmful because his fat cells are bigger. And that is the problem with visceral fat. The main, there's nothing inherently pathogenic about visceral fat. Those fat cells aren't mystically harmful. 
It's just that that visceral cavity is so limited in volume that it only allows fat growth through hypertrophy because that is a way to limit the total amount of fat you can grow. If our visceral fat was able to grow through hyperplasia, then it may expand so much that it starts to compress our our tissues. It starts to squeeze the liver or squeeze the intestines or squeeze the kidneys. And so by only allowing visceral fat to grow through hypertrophy, you do limit how much it can grow, but it also becomes much more pro-inflammatory because hypertrophic fat cells release a lot more pro-inflammatory cytokines than smaller hyperplastic fat cells. So there's very much a genetic ethnic component to this that influences how ethnicities are able to stimulate the growth of new fat cells. And then there is, there's absolutely a sex component to it as well, which of course is still genetic, where women, because of the effects of estrogens, are able to stimulate a higher degree of hyperplasia than her male counterparts are. And so women will have that ability to, and this explains why the average woman both has higher fat than her male counterpart and yet is healthier in every single cardiometabolic metric. If it was just a matter of fat mass, then women should be dying more from all these cardiometabolic diseases and yet they're not, it's men. Because women will have more fat cells, but smaller because of estrogens. Men have relatively lower levels of estrogens, so we don't have that hyperplasia as much as the females do. So if we're getting fatter, it's more through hypertrophy relative to the, to the ladies.